So I wanted to uh, ask about when I was doing research and Louisa May Alcott, uh, she was never married. Yes. And as a gay person, my ears perked up at that. Yep. I was kind of wondering what your research led oh, you. There's all kinds of interesting things there. Can you? Yeah. Can you dish? There's there's really interesting gender stuff in the book, which I don't. I'm very hesitant to apply a sort of 21st century lens onto because, um, what is it to have feelings before category? Which is fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. But I mean, she does say the whole book she wants to be a boy. Yeah. She says it every almost every single page. Also, her relationship with Lori that Lori is a boy with a girl's name and Joe is a girl with a boy's name. Their relationship is very specific and fascinating. And Louisa May Alcott had a line in a letter where she said, I, I believe I am a man in a woman's body for I fall in love with half a dozen pretty girls and I've never once felt that way about a man. So there's also that. <laughs> but um, I think that, you know, what I found fascinating as a writer and as a director was this idea of narrative limitations of women. That even though she never got married and she never had children, she felt that she had to have Joe March get married and have children, who in some ways was her avatar. And she felt that way because it was, you know, her publisher, publisher's expectation and fan expectation. And I always think that's interesting when life can be more progressive than art. Yeah, and, uh, and how, you know, Joe is like this de facto, you know, queer icon, you know, I would think that the outcasts, you know, would, you know, see themselves in her. Yes, definitely. And I knew that in our movie, then in this movie we were going to make together, that um, Joe March is not beloved by all these different women for so, so long because she marries Professor Bear. That's not why we love her. It's not why Patti Smith <laughs> loves her. Joe embodied something else, and I think the thing that she embodied is the thing that Louisa May Alcott was, which was an author. Make it short and spicy. And if the main character is a girl, make sure she's married by the end. Timothy, um, your, I loved your looks in the movie, Thank your you. costumes. Did that um, impact your harness looks from the red carpet? No, I guess it didn't impact, no, I didn't impact that, but within the actual filming, I must say, uh, you were reminded me yesterday, I was always trying to take the jackets off, which yeah. sometimes let me, but no, there's a freedom to it. And wearing Joe's clothing, it, it felt apt in a way that my friends, you know, you share clothing, and I have Jacqueline Duran, who's a costume designer on this movie, to thank for that. She was really excellent and uh, loves clothing, loves whatever details, and mm. uh, was egoless about it in the best way. It had nothing to do with it. When people are so good at their job, they, you know, I think you just do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the the gays will kill me if I don't ask. Any updates on Calling By Your Name sequel? Oh. Okay. That, well, uh, that uh, Luke is finishing his TV show in Italy. I know that. And uh, I haven't had a chance to read the Andre Ausman book that came out. Find me. I don't know if you yeah. had a chance. Yeah. Yet. But uh, I know uh, I see other people waver on their desire to do it. It's uh, I'm not like I would really love to do another you know, chapter of that. And what I also like is I think True to Find Me, even though I haven't read it yet, that can be years away. And I like the idea of that because I think people are right when they're like, well, so if something's really special, don't touch it. And I totally agree.